Tony, our next guest is the is the winner of the Nobel Prize for Peace. And would you please welcome a very outstanding and controversial gentleman, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> We come to a tragic period in our nation when we equate dissent with disloyalty. I think our loyalties to the country should be measured by our ability to lead the nation to higher heights of democracy and to the great dream of justice and humanity. I love America. I speak out not in anger, but with anxiety and sorrow in my heart. I speak out because I'm disappointed with America. And there can be no great disappointment where there is no great love. Things have gotten worse, particularly in the economic area. And I think the uh, impatience is very deep and uh, the discontent is very broad. And if something isn't done with haste, to remove the intolerable conditions that exist in our communities all over the nation, then I see us sinking into darker nights of social disruption. When profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, militarism, and economic exploitation are incapable of being conquered. We as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin to shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. And I think there has to be a transformation here in terms of our thinking uh, and in terms of, of peace. We've got to come to see now that peace must not only be a goal that we talk about and seek, but a means by which we arrive at that point. True revolution of values will soon cause us to question the fairness and justice of many of our present policies. A true revolution of values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of poverty and wealth. A true revolution of values will lay hands on the world order nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Man of conscience, he doesn't take a stand in order to search for consensus. He's ultimately a molder of consensus. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and moments of convenience, but where he stands in moments of challenge and moments of controversy. And I would take this position even if I didn't have the majority of people agreeing with me now. Our only hope today lies in our ability to recapture the revolutionary spirit, declaring eternal hostility to poverty racism and militarism. A genuine revolution of values means in the final analysis that every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty to mankind as a whole in order to preserve the best in their individual societies. This calls for a worldwide fellowship that lifts the neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, race, class, and nation is in reality a call for an all-embracing, unconditional love for all men. This oft-misunderstood and misinterpreted concept, so readily dismissed by the Nietzsche's of the world as a weak and cowardly force, now become an absolute necessity for the survival of mankind.